Friday race fans, welcome to another edition of My Favorite Parts. In this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, electrics in these uh, kind of popular slot cars. You know, the Tommy based cars, Tyco, Brush Barrel, uh, Wizard, uh, maybe in another one or two. So we'll talk about pickup shoes, uh, what's important about them. I mean, you hear the terms standard travel, low travel, long travel, why that's important. Uh, the springs, the diameter of the spring, the strength of the spring, what's important about that uh, in all the platforms. And then we'll talk about uh, the brush barrel cars with their brush barrel springs and their motor brushes and what's important about that. So let's get into it. As we said, we're going to be talking about electrics today. And, you know, as I've repeated in a number of other episodes, I get stuff on the workbench and people just have you know, two different pickup shoes, different this, different that, um, nothing matches, it's just, it's crazy what people will do and then they wonder why their cars won't work. So, um, as we pointed out in the previous edition, the, what I would consider Tomy based cars like, um, you know, Viper, BSRT, obviously Super G Plus, um, Tomy SRT, Turbo, Bulldog, the new Super 7, these are all kind of uh, Tomy inspired uh, products. And one of the things that all those cars I just mentioned have in common is the hangers and the pickup shoe design and to some degree the springs. Now each individual car, depending on how it's set up, primarily the, the size of the front tire, how high the car rides on the track will, will determine what type of pickup shoe that you need. But if you have, say, a bulldog that is set up for uh, a routed track and a Super 7 that's set up for a routed track and then obviously a, a Viper, BSRT, something like that that's set up for a routed track, you can all use pretty much the same low travel shoes. And we'll get into why, uh, what, you know, what's low travel, standard travel, long travel. We'll point that out. So on these particular cars when you're building them, you can, you can figure out how better to set your car up. All right, so um, first thing would be, would be hangers. So we're gonna get ourselves a set of Viper hangers right here. You can see that, all right. And one of the things that I like to do with these hangers is give the bottom of this window just a little tweak like that, okay? So look at that. Compare that to this. You see the difference? All right, and I'll show you why that's important. Now, I'm working on getting hangers that are already pre-bent from the factory. But, you know, that's down the road. Just kind of pop them in like such. All right. Now, to kind of jump ahead a little bit, the reason why you want those hangers kind of pre-bent is what that does when the shoe is compressed. All right. It it kind of prevents the shoe from unhooking off that window, especially in a crash. Because if you ever wonder why these, these cars, these Tomy based cars will lose shoes um, just in running them or crashes because that hanger is basically 90 degrees. So if you put that little bitty bend to kind of get this bottom of that window frame, for lack of a better description, forward, it will greatly eliminate that. So that gets you the hangers, all right? So the next thing would be the end bell, all right? And you can see that the brush arms and the brushes are inside the end bell. And the raw hangers, or excuse me, the raw uh, brush arms look like that, okay? So when you go to put the armature in, you need a tool that spreads these arms. Now, this is a professional tool. I sell a little 
kind of a stamped looking church key sort of thing that does the same the same type of deal. So you would get your timing bracket, put your spreader tool in, drop your armature in, and there you go. Now a lot of guys are kind of they they get nervous or whatever because they, they don't understand how all this works and well I don't know I'm going to take that thing apart okay that's fine um, but once you get to that then you just put your magnets on your rear bushing and then you pop all of that into the chassis okay um, I'm not going to get into any of that here there's enough videos out where people are assembling and disassembling these kinds of cars I've done some Dan at Viper's done some you know, other people on YouTube have talked about how to take these cars apart and put them back together, so we won't, you know, get into any of that now. But that just shows you real quick how easy it is to get um, all of that together, okay? So those are the hangers, and that is your brush system. Um, with your can motor cars, uh, all of that comes in a can motor assembly. You just push that in, in your you're, you're good to go. Uh, Tyco, here again I'm not going to get into assembly and disassembly of that. There's a number of videos on how to do that. Uh, kind of the summary, you about need three hands to, to get a Tyco together once you get all this stuff all together and then try to push that down into the car. But um, you do have on your pickup shoes and your pickup shoe springs Okay, these, the thing that you got to make sure that, that you, when you load these things up, is there's these little kick-ups here. That's what the, the shoe springs get locked into, so you get uh, your uh, uh, spring tension. Lifelike M. Um, these shoes are very, very particular, and what you've got to watch out for is if you notice on that shoe there is a slit in that shoe right in here and what that's for is their specific pickup shoe spring and it's got like a little hair that comes off of it this is really really important I can't emphasize this enough in the patent drawing that uh, Russell did to uh, patent this design you know way way back this is what they call a second path of electricity and the reason why you have to have this and this is important guys because you, you know if you don't do that and then you, you you put an M car together and you wonder why it doesn't run well a lot of times when you put pickups on they might need to be massaged a little bit in terms of getting the angle of this hanger correctly you know don't assume that that's bent exactly perfect from the factory so what you do is you get a piece of track or a setup block and you, you, you pick your car up and down and you watch how these hangers perform on the brush barrels. Okay, it's really important. But what happens sometimes is this hanger will, will get unloaded off that barrel and that spring, because that spring is loaded into the chassis there, and the pickup shoe comes across the top of that. That creates that second path of electricity. They're really kind of a pain to put together, but it's really important. So if you don't have these springs, you've got to make sure your shoes are tweaked exactly perfect so when you put the car on the track, the hangers don't unload. And that was one of the fatal problems with the old uh, Tommy Mega G is the way their springs work was very similar. The shoes were kind of similar in the way that they worked and they came up over the brush barrel but the factory didn't put um, this little second path of electricity. They had a pocket that was basically a blind pocket and you just loaded a spring into it and then that spring went nowhere essentially in terms of electricity. And those cars, because you know mass production, you put them on the track and this hanger would unload off that brush barrel and the cars would run terrible. Okay. Um, M-Car, these are pretty simplistic cars where they have a spring plate. This is not a spare part, so if the spring plate breaks, you're done. 
uh, but the shoe just there's a there's a little window down inside this spring plate and you've got to get your magnifiers on to see it. A lot of people just cram the shoe in and put it on and put it on the track and it, it runs terrible because they didn't get it into that little window that's down into there. But if, once you do that, then they do work well. Okay. And then Wizard, Storm Cars, a similar situation with uh, shoes going over brush barrels. So you have to kind of make sure that they're not unloading. Their springs are very similar to Tyco, only it's a double spring, which is better. And it, uh, that creates your second path of electricity as well. So the spring acts as a second path of electricity, which is very, very important on that. Now, within all of that, depending on the magnet load that you have in the car, um, the size of the spring has a lot to do with uh, how fast the car can go and then handling. But in, say, a standard grade Viper car, V-Spec, uh, 6 ohm level 4, uh, Super 7, and either what I consider uh, a uh, uh, Tomy track setup or the uh, uh, GTS for, for routed track, I use the same spring in that. Uh, Bulldog, Tomy SRT, all that's very, very similar because we're using coil springs. Um, you'll hear people talk about 07, 007, 008. 009, 10, that would be the diameter of this wire. And as the wire increases, it gets stiffer. So with these common grade cars, um, sevens or eights is a good spring to have. And you don't want to put, say, in a car like this, tens, because it's a very stiff spring. Because what will happen is that spring, you get the spring tension so high that the magnets can't keep the car on the track. So, you know, if you're going to drag race in a straight line, it may not make any difference, but in road racing, it'll artificially force the front end up, okay, and your handling will be terrible. Um, you can fine tune speed in these cars by having a lighter or heavier spring in one side or another. That's some guys are good at figuring that out. Uh, most people in the hobby, they just don't worry about it. They just stick the eights in there or whatever and they're done and it works really good for most of what they do. Um, now, we had said earlier that we were gonna talk about short travel, standard travel, and long travel shoes in these uh, Tomy-based platforms. If the front tire on the car is say 0.34 diameter or less, you need to use a short travel shoe. Okay? Either the Viper Short Travel or my new HCS AMG shoe. And really, where that travel is accomplished. is in the hook in the back. Not so much the front, but this hook in the back. Um, low travel, this hook will be down uh, closer to the deck. Okay, longer travel, this hook in the back will be up. Okay, relative to the, the plate, it'll be high up. So that, if you think about it, your, um, your hinge point is, is just higher and longer. Okay, so you can use a long travel shoe on a car with 340 or smaller tires. The car will run, but it'll handle terribly. There's been a time or two when I'm trying to sort out a race car, and it's sometimes hard to know, you know, you get your shoes mixed up, you don't keep them segregated, and you inadvertently get a standard travel shoe on a car that needs a low travel shoe and the car is fast enough but then you just like okay it's not handling good in the corner so then you pull it apart and you really look and then you oh darn it I got standard travel shoes on it change to low travel shoe put the car back on the track and like all right good it goes to those bad spots car runs great all right if you have say more of a 
plastic track car that's set up with fat tire fronts. And we've talked about this tool here in other videos. So this, let's just go back to the real quick. This is, there you go. That's actually 335. So it's below 340, right? This will be 385. So fairly tall tire. You have a lot of travel. There's a lot of daylight under the car. If you put a standard, a low travel shoe on the car, what will happen is because there's not enough travel back here on this ski shoe, it'll cantilever down and then just ride on the toe. You won't get any speed out of the car. So the whole idea with long travel in these step shoes, they, they help create that. You can tweak the shoes, you kind of get one of these blocks here or something similar and you just sit there and, and look at this contact patch and you keep tweaking these shoes till you get a perfectly good uh, patch on the shoe as the car wears. This one right now, the way this is set up is riding a little heel heavy. Um, I'd rather have it ride heel heavy than toe heavy. For whatever reason, toe heavy shoes don't run quite as fast. It's better to have them to where you get good wear patterns front to back. That means you're really contacting the rails well. Standard travel, you know, say sizes 340 to, oh, let's take a look at our gauge here. 340 to say somewhere in the 350 range for, for standard travel. That, it just depends on the car. You'd have to kind of put them on there, run some laps, see what kind of contact patch you got. And then obviously for fat tire cars that are running on plastic track, you gotta have long travel for these big, um, big front tires. Tyco 440, um, they pretty much run a standard factory shoe for uh, the narrow or the wide pan setups. You can tweak these shoes uh, either here or here. You can tweak the bend to get the contact patch to ride where you want it to. Uh, there are some companies that have made ski shoes for this. Um, here again, they require setup, and in this particular car, if you kind of look at it, it's a little on the heel heavy side versus the front, although it's riding front to back, it's a little, this particular one's a little heavy um, on that. But uh, ski shoes do help Tyco 440. They're just, I've seen some situations where they actually don't solve any problems. M car, uh, some of these that you see that are uh, nickel plated, you can see this shoe right here has a good patch front to back. This one here is a little on the heel heavy side. Here again, if you really want to get most out of your car, what you would do is uh, get a tool. Like this, it's got a little uh, slot in there. And you go in and you kind of just bend this thing a little bit. It's better off the car, but that kind of helps you bend it. Or if it's riding, um, uh, that's, this, if it's not, excuse me, let's back this up. If it's riding toe heavy, we want to bend it like that. Oh, let's, I'm gonna have to edit this out. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. All right, count to uh, five then. One, two, three, not four, <laughs> five. All right, so on this M car here, as you can see here, we're a little on the heel heavy side, and this one here is doing pretty good. So to correct this, because this thing is, uh, this is down to the rail, and this is up off the rail, all right, you, we need to kind of get this front part bent down. So you would take your tool and kind of, you know, tweak it like this, okay? If the shoe was riding toe heavy, you do the opposite where you want to kind of get back here at this hinge point and then, you know, go back the other way. Sometimes you have to take it off the car to get this right. But this is where these setup blocks really, really help so you can kind of look and see how well that shoe 
his writing. Um, talk to the guys that run T-Jet Freight Cars. They'll tell you all about getting your shoes tweaked. I mean, that's it's a science and an art for those particular cars. But, you know, these are just basic things that if you want to get that little extra speed, make sure your shoes have a good contact patch. Um, lifelike T-Cars are a bit of a problem depending on the track. They actually have this car and these parts designed to where when you're running it on a lifelike track, they wear perfect. But the lifelike rail is higher, so when you run this car on Tommy track or even, say, a routed track, it's generally a very uh, toe-heavy uh, setup. As you can see right now, one shoe, eh, it's weak contact patch back here, and this one really is nothing but toe-heavy. Um, there's not much of a fix in terms of tweaking for this. There's just not any material that you can do a whole lot with. Uh, the only, if you're going to run it on a routed track, you'd have to get smaller front tires to drop the car down. Wizard Storm, same setup as Tyco for the most part. You know, tweaking the shoes is the same way. Uh, this one's running pretty good. This one's a little on the heel heavy side in that. But like I say, if it's a slightly heel heavy setup, that's better than, than toe heavy. The cars will, cars will run pretty good. And after a point, you'll get a little groove going back here and it'll end up, you know, with a, with a solid contact patch. All right, so last thing to cover, we've covered pickup shoes, uh, short, standard, long travel, uh, shoe springs, you know, the tension's important. For your common cars, you want relatively light tension. For neo cars, you want, which is the other end of the spectrum, you want really heavy springs like 10. Um, cars like Tyco 440, Lifelike M, and Wizard are what we call brush barrel cars. And that is literally what you have here. You've got motor brushes inside barrels with springs. Okay. The Tyco and the Wizard, those dimensions are pretty similar in terms of the length inside the barrel. Um, this right here, this is a Tyco 440 motor brush spring. And the Wizard line of springs for uh, storm cars is basically the same overall dimension, but you can get them in a lot of different thicknesses or whatever. The Tyco, I think, is about a 006. It's not a really strong spring. Uh, Wizards, depending on the setup, the amp draw, I think you can get them up to maybe nines, maybe tens. I have seen where people will take those heavy springs and put them in a Tyco, and the cars actually run terrible. Um, in any configuration of this car that I've ever hopped up or whatever, I have found that the standard issue motor brush springs are best, okay? I'm not exactly sure why, but it just is. When you put those real heavy springs in it, it almost acts like a, a disc brake on the, on the commutator, the armature, and the car runs slower. With a car like a Wizard, you have adjustable tension in these brush tubes, so you can sit there and finely crank in or out those springs, and you can actually put it on a uh, an amp draw meter and read your amp draw to kind of figure out where the sweet spot is on the setup of these. So here again, don't take a heavy wizard motor brush spring and put it in a Tyco. That's not your friend. Um, M-Car, it looks like it takes the same basic spring, but it really doesn't. Uh, I don't know if you can see right here in the video, these are lifelike motor brush springs. They're the same basic diameter, but they're just a touch shorter. Um, you can put Tyco springs in, but over time I've found that these shorter standard springs are really better in an M car. And I'm not exactly sure as why that's the case, but it just is. Sometimes these springs are magnetic. There we go. Motor brushes for these three cars, pretty much standard. You know, uh, standard Wizard, 
a motor brush or a standard Tyco motor brush will work in all of these, so that's a good thing is cross compatibility within all of that. Uh, Wizard does have some cars that have what they call big brush, so the diameter of this tube is larger and then the brush in and of itself is larger. That's good for high amp draw situations where say you've got a you know two and a half ohm or lower armature where you need a larger contact patch on the commutator therefore you get better uh, current flow and amp draw. Alright that kind of covers the basics there on electricity. Um, just to reiterate don't start crossing up things and get well I've only got a short spring and a long spring I'm going to cram it in there or you know, another thing is, you know, I got a one new brush and one half used brush. I'm going to put that in. Yeah, the car will run, but not very good. Or uh, what I see quite a bit on pickup shoe springs is completely different um, thicknesses of the wire and lengths of the pickup shoe spring, and even different pickup shoes where you don't get the same shoe on the car. Where you know you get something like this, where you've got a stepped shoe on one side and a ski shoe on the other car may run, but it's never going to run to its best. So that kind of covers the basics of electrics and probably the next video we'll do after that we'll talk about uh, armatures and bushings and so alright. If you got any questions just put, uh, put them in the comments below. Alright, have a nice day.